Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and as I always say, I am so excited for today's episode. And it's always true. I am excited for each and every episode that I do, especially the ones where I have author interviews, which I have for you today. I am doubly excited today, though, because we are starting something new here at the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and that is that we have arranged with many of our authors, our upcoming authors that I'm interviewing, to have them send books for us to give away to you, my fabulous listeners. So there will be more information about the giveaway at the end of this episode, but if this book sounds like something that you are interested in, then you should definitely stay tuned to find out how you can enter uh, to be eligible for that giveaway. And as I said, I'll talk more about that at the end. And going forward, I will tell you which which authors I am interviewing have books uh, available for giveaway, and then there will be more. There will be further instruction on those episodes as well. So lots of great reasons, even more. I mean, hopefully you tune in because. I interview so many fabulous authors. It's not even about me. It's about these fabulous authors that I talk to and their passion for their craft and the stories that they come up with. I hope that you love these interviews as much as I do. But now, if you need more incentive, here you have it. A chance to win copies of these books that I am talking about. So... More on that at the end of the episode. In the meantime, I am interviewing today author Louise Cole and about her book, The Devil's Poetry. I spoke with Louise recently um, from her home in England. I love doing international interviews. They're so much fun. I, I get to Skype with people around the world and... I was laughing at myself because it was 10 o'clock my time in the morning, which meant it was 5 o'clock in the evening Louise's time, and I kept wanting to say good morning, realizing that no, it's really evening for her. So that was just me being confused about the time, but it was so much fun to talk to Louise and um, hear about her book. So the book, as I said, is The Devil's Poetry. Let me give you the blurb from the back of that book. Callie's world will be lost to war unless she can unlock the magic of an ancient manuscript. She and her friends are being drafted, and many of them won't come back. When a secret order tells her she can bring peace just by reading from a book, it seems an easy solution. Perhaps too easy. But how do you make the right decision when no one will tell you the truth? Callie soon finds herself hunted, trapped between desperate allies and diabolical enemies. There are only two people Callie can trust— her best friend, and her ex-Marine bodyguard. And they are on different sides. Callie alone must decide. Dare she read this book? What's the price? And who will pay? So this is a young adult book. It is obviously um, in the fantasy genre. It's great because it does ask that question of, you know, what if something's too too good to be true, is it? And of course, it's not as simple as read from a book and save the world. You know, books like this are never that simple. There's always challenges to be faced. There's always a journey to be undertaken. But even more than the difficulties that Callie faces in making that decision and um, carrying out her eventual decision, there's even more gray area in this book. There's all kinds of twists and turns and questions. As it said on the back, she's not sure who she can trust. She's not sure fully what's going on. And as the reader, we're a little confused too, because, you know, it should just be that simple. Read from the book, save the world, right? And it's not. And so this, the book is full of really great 
different twists, things that you might not see coming, different angles at which Callie has to come at this problem. It's a really fun read. It's full of lots of adventure. It is the first of a trilogy, so there's more to come. The second book will be out later this year. So that is the description of The Devil's Poetry by Louise Cole. So let's turn now to my interview with Louise and hear what she has to say about this wonderful book. Hi, Louise. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sarah. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. We are going to talk about your book, The Devil's Poetry, but before we do that, I would love for you to introduce yourself to my listeners, just so they can get to know you a little bit. Uh, I'm Louise. I live in North Yorkshire in England. Um, I'm a journalist by trade, so that's pretty much how I pay the bills, because being writing novels really doesn't, uh, doesn't pay your rent or mortgage, you know? Not for most of us. Um, yeah, I've got three spaniels and a currently uh, a garden that's a huge field full of mud oh. so i spent huge amounts of my day hosing down muddy dogs <laughs> <laughs> and i bet they love the mud oh yeah yes um sorry i just my mind went off to spaniels frolicking in mud and being very very happy <laughs> but that's not what we're here to talk about so tell us about your book the devil's poetry the Devil's Poetry is set in a world very much like our own. The only difference is the political climate is much tenser, believe it or not, than today. So we're on the brink of, of a world war, a very polarizing issue around oil, and all of the young people are being drafted. And my heroine is given the chance to stop all of it, stop the national service and the war, if she reads from an ancient manuscript. And the book then is really about an exploration of, of that idea of if we did have a magical solution, if we could wave a wand to stop war, to stop hunger, to stop famine, would we do it? Or would we, without knowing what the risks were, without knowing what the price was? Right. And it sounds simple enough. You know, she is what they call a reader and there's the book to read. Yeah. I mean, it seems simple enough and yet it's not, it's a lot more complicated than that. And it's, it's a lot more gray than that. It's not black and white. No, not at all. I think it, I think it's one of those kind of magical solution questions that, um, you know, if we could go back in time to shoot Hitler, would we really? And, and risk changing the course of history, you know, without knowing what the the implications, of what you're about to do are. It is it would any of us actually have the courage to do something that seems too good to be true? And so, uh, for a lot of the book, Callie, my heroine, is trying to work out not only how this works and and whether it could work, but also who can, who she can trust and what the price would be. Right. So talk a little bit more about Callie. Um, what, what about her as the heroine of this book will, do you think will resonate with readers? I think uh, Callie, Callie's a very bright young woman, but she, she is very much a realistic young woman. You know, she's 17. She doesn't have all the answers. She makes some disastrous decisions. And I don't know how many of us didn't make disastrous decisions well past the age of 17, um, even without hanging over us um and i think the most obvious thing that will I, I suspect uh resonate with an awful lot of readers is that she loves books they're her escape and she identifies with the heroines of the story she's read she she very much sees the world around her in terms of stories and the, and the literature that's informed her and I think for a lot of us, when we're young, you know, books, if we if we love reading, then novels become our way of dealing with with life, and maybe escaping it sometimes, understanding it. I like her. I think she's, I think she's really, you know, a uh, very brave young woman mm -hmm. in many ways. Yeah, yeah, she is. Um, and like many heroines in young adult novels she has a rather complicated relationship with her father her mother is um is dead so it's just her and her father and she has a very complicated relationship with her father i don't want to give you know too much of the book away but can you talk a little bit about how that relationship affects callie as the main character i think i think one of the things i was interested in with callie is that idea of 
how we develop coping mechanisms when we're very young. So um, Callie essentially has a sense of abandonment because her mother died when she was young and her father um, hasn't dealt with that well. And so he, he, in his own way, has abandoned his daughter emotionally. And as a result, she becomes very self reliant she becomes very um quite closed down i think in terms of her emotions and her the amount that she shares with other people um and i don't think that's untypical of a, of a lot of you know young people who who maybe struggle to trust that there will be somebody there to catch them if they if they fell and, and part a, a great deal of the book i mean you know there's the plot but thematically it's very much about how Callie learns to face her own demons, how she maybe goes through that that transition that we all do between being a young adult and an adult. It, one of the key things is when you start to see your parents as real people rather than their, the role that they play for you and maybe understand some of the things that previously just infuriated you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that she, she has a very strong personal and emotional journey through the book, I think. Yeah. So there's the first part of the interview with Louise Cole on her book, The Devil's Poetry. We do have to take our first break of the podcast, but when we come back, Louise will be talking about what inspired her to write this story. And I love her answer as a person who loves books. I really love her answers. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and we will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Louise Cole about her first book in her trilogy. The first book is called The Devil's Poetry. And let's get back to that interview. She's going to talk a little bit about what inspired The Devil's Poetry, as well as talking about the second and third books, which are upcoming in the trilogy. What was your inspiration for this story? Oh, I think... I really love the idea that for all that, you know, we writers get credit for producing novels. Actually, it's the reader that brings that book to life. You and I could both read the same book and we will take quite different things away from it. We will imagine different things as we're reading it. My heroine might look different to yours in my head. Um, it, it's really the reader who becomes a kind of co-artist in terms of, of making stories real and, and making them more than words on paper, you know? So novelists do the first bit and then it's readers that transform this text. And that's why I think that's the, the idea that grabbed me. That's why we keep producing new versions of Shakespeare 500 years after he died, because each person that picks the plays up imagines a different world, a different interpretation. And I wanted to play with that idea. Yeah. And this uh, turns out that it is the first book in a series, um, and the, sec the second book is called On Holy Ground. I don't want to give anything away about the ending of the first book, because <laughs> I want people to read it, but can you talk a little <laughs> bit about On Holy Ground and how that story develops? On, on Holy Ground carries on, really, from where the, the Devil's Poetry finished, but Callie's problems are now quite different. It turns out that saving the world was just the start. And she then has to navigate this new world where people's priorities are different. Um, her allies and enemies have shifted and she is very much alone. She ends up in the US and kind of um, has, to, has to work out who she can trust and how she can get home with virtually no support. Um, and, and find the book. So the stakes are very high, but it's it's a very it's a very tense political thriller with as well with all of the same characters and cast from the 
first novel um, back with their own very specific agendas. And as in the first novel, everybody's agendas are going to crap, you know, collide and crunch at some point. Okay. And will there be more books in this series? There is a third novel, which is I'm currently working through the second draft, and that will be the, the completion of Callie's story. And the, the, the very important job that she finds that she has to do in On Holy Ground. So the third novel will be called The Forsaken, I think. That's its title. And, and it will be about how she can pull that off, how she can um, <clears throat> fix the, the situation that the world has found itself in. Okay. Thank you for that. I have two Amazon related uh, questions for you since we've talked about both books. The first is that you mentioned that uh, the book, The Devil's Poetry, is on sale. Is that correct on Amazon this week? Kindle, Kindle Press have Kindle uh, Press. Are running a promotion on, yeah, or Amazon Publishing is running a promotion on the, uh, the Devil's Poetry this week for 99 cents on Kindle. So if you want a cheap, excellent read this week, now is the time to buy it. Perfect. Thank you. And then also, uh, I saw on Twitter recently that the the second book on Holy Ground is currently up on Kindle Scout, uh, the first three chapters to be voted on for potential publishing on that uh, medium, yeah, right? It, yeah, Kindle Scout is, the, is a kind of great platform for letting um, your readers and fans know that the next book is coming. So Amazon kind of gives us a, a shop window for a month, which is very generous of them. Um, and if enough people nominate it, then Kindle Press might well pick it up for a contract. But it will be coming to my readers regardless. But it would be very nice if people could go on Kindle Scout and vote for On Holy Ground. Yeah. And if you finish uh, Devil's Poetry and you just are jonesing for more, you can go read the first three chapters, which is always fun. <laughs> yeah. And get that you little can. teaser. So um, you mentioned that you're working on the second draft of the third book. Um, that's your current project. Are you working on anything else? That's probably enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am actually. I have an adult fantasy series. When I a couple of years ago, I wrote a, a YA fantasy that um, I put aside. My agent at the time uh, didn't want to to pitch any more YA fantasy to UK publishers at the time because they they weren't really buying young adult stuff. As she said, put it away for a little while. And actually, since I've since I've uh, been kind of living with it and living with the story of that book, I've decided to make it an adult sort of epic fantasy series. So I'm working on that at the moment, and I think I have an editor lined up for it. So that would be very nice. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, you said that you are um, a journalist in your day job, but so you obviously you write for your day job and for your, you know, your, 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 yeah. your writing job. <laughs> I mean, they're both writing jobs. Um, when Writing calls is a busman's holiday, you know? <laughs> yes. In the States. <laughs> um, some people use it. I don't know if it's terribly common, but maybe I just know it because I read too many British novels. <laughs> You can't read too many British novels. I agree. <laughs> I, you can't read too many novels, <laughs> regardless. No. Um, when did you start writing? Is it? Did you always want to write? I did always want to write, but to be candid, I didn't always have very much to say. I think it's. I think one of the first things you need to to work out, particularly if you're going to write novels, um, because they're a huge commitment of time you know just enormous it takes a big chunk of your life writing a novel so you have to know I think why this why you want to tell this story what it is that fascinates you about it or you'll never get to the end um so I did want to write but I don't know that I have an awful lot to say um and I started to I started to kind of write books seriously about 15 years ago after I was seriously ill and kind of I was recuperating and um, and that was the first time that I, I started to, you know, sit down and write with any serious intent. So in terms of writing, then, do you have any advice for aspiring authors who might be thinking this is something they want to do? I think the opportunities to write books and express yourself and have novels published these days are greater than ever. But I think there is a danger that 
people sometimes sell their stories and their talent short as well because you can just self-publish it if you want. There's nothing to stop you. I think I think it's worth, um, if you're going to do it, doing it really well and writing the very best book that you can. And that might take, you know, two drafts, three drafts, four drafts. It, it, it's, an, you know, it's how long is a piece of string. There is no specific time length. But if you want to do it to kind of get rich quick, I'm not saying that's hey, if you can, then go for it. I'm not saying that's not a valid choice. But for my part, I think if you're going to write novels and you're going to give this huge chunk of your life to doing this, do it well, you know, learn your craft, take your time for it. Your story deserves to take however long it needs to really mature and become perfect and polished, you know. And when you look at the really successful self-published writers like Hugh Howey and Michael J. Sullivan and some of these people who've, who've been nominally successful, it's because they they practice, practice and practice until they were really, really good at what they were doing. You know, they didn't just sit down one weekend and think, hey, I can bash something out. You know, they gave them time. It's a craft like anything else. You've got to be prepared to like give yourself time to become a black belt. I'm going to interrupt one more time so we can take our second and final break of the podcast. But when we come back, we will be talking, I will be talking more with Louise, a little bit more about her advice for authors, where you can find her on the internet, and of course, the uh, details about the giveaway for The Devil's Poetry. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. If you remember before the break, Louise was talking about her advice for authors and that it's a pra- it's a skill like anything else that takes practice, that takes commitment, and that you don't just jump in and, and write something perfect the first time out. It does take practice like so many things in life. So here we have the conclusion to my interview with Louise Cole. Right. So don't take the um, college approach of writing your final paper the night before basically no, no, just you know enjoy it learn live it you know and not I think the other thing I would say is have a very clear idea of what what success means to you because there are a lot of people who who will count success in monetary terms um to be honest in in the UK I mean the average earnings for novelists are well under ten thousand pounds a year. I mean, it, it's kind of minimum wage, you know, stuff. You couldn't you couldn't keep a family on it. You couldn't live on it. You probably couldn't keep your dogs on it, if I'm perfectly honest. So you're going to have to do it for other reasons. And some people are really successful. That's wonderful, you know, in in terms of money. Then that's great. But there are lots of other things which constitute success. You know, finishing your first draft. Uh, finding a reader who really loves it, getting a good review. You know, there are lots of different ways of measuring success, and I think we should celebrate all of them. Yeah, I agree. So it sounds for you, like for you, that writing can be kind of all-consuming. Do you include autobiographical elements in your books at all? Not deliberately. 
I'm not saying that I don't have overlap, for instance, with Callie, because I was also a teenager who loved books. So I guess to some extent, you know, there's going to be common ground. But if anything, I steer away from my real life in fiction because I think sometimes it's hard to write about things that you don't have any emotional distance from, that you need to have a certain perspective before you can actually kind of polish it and show it to people without it just being you bleeding all over the page. <laughs> you know, I think that there's, uh, and, and also I'm, I'm quite a private person. You know, I don't want the story to be about me. I want the story to be something universal. Sure. Thank you. You love books. That's clear from your speaking today and from the, the book itself, because you have all sorts of literary references in the book, which I love. Um, when you take the time to read, who are your favorite authors and what are your favorite genres? I did, I did English at college many, many years ago. So I read a lot of the classics and still love them. Um, these days, I tend to read a lot of epic fantasy. So people like Scott Lynch, Patrick Rothfuss, Reddick, um, Robin Hobb, I think is, is a wonderful writer. I'm... Um, if people actually manage to to finish a series <laughs> instead of doing, you know, a Game of Thrones and like wait, making you wait 10 years, I love them even more. I'm getting to the point where I'll only start a series when I know that the, third, the final book is coming. I absolutely hear that. And, and I, love, I love crime fiction. I love an awful lot of commercial fiction. Um, I'm very, and I read a lot of YA, of course, because that's that's so far what I've tended to write, so... Thank you. Where can people find you on social media? And do you have a website? I don't have a website at the moment because actually I find that I interact with people on Facebook, on Twitter. I've got my Amazon authors page. Um, and I find, I, ironically, in my media agency, I create websites for a lot of other people. You know, it's one of the things that we do. But but in terms of being an author, it's, uh, I find it a little bit static. It's quite hard to talk to someone through a website. And the fun bit of, you know, um, the internet these days for writers is they can talk to readers. We can actually interact with people. We can chat to them. And so I find Twitter and Facebook much better for that. Okay. Um, your, uh, where we could find you on Twitter and Facebook, what are your handles? Oh, gosh, I think on Facebook, I'm Louise Cole Author. And on Twitter, I'm Louise Cole 44. Okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Because my grandmother had 44 grandchildren and I was pretty much the last. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How many, how many children did she have? I think she had 10 in all and, and seven of them made it to adulthood. Wow. And they had big families. Yeah. Wow. I have, yeah. Wow. I have four first cousins total. <laughs> So big, big families are amazing to me. <laughs> I don't know how you keep track of it all. Is there anything else that you would like for people to know about your writing or your books? Anything that we haven't covered? Um, if they'd like to have a look at the beginning of The Devil's Poetry. I mean, you know, it's 99 cents at the moment, so it's not a huge gamble financially. But if they would like to read the beginning for free, it's on Insta Freebie. If they go and look. And there's also one of my um, young adult uh, thrillers, a short story that's free on Insta Freebie called Mindless, okay. which is one of my favorites. So uh, if they would like to go and uh, try that and see if they like my writing, they're very welcome. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I um, uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to speak with me. And we managed to get through our technical difficulties to <laughs> chat. Um, and thank you for the book. It's, it's wonderful. I, I, I love Callie and her love of books so that, you know, I, I always resonate with a, an, a reader, a character, geez, who loves books as much as I do. So, um, thank you for that. Pleasure. It's been great talking to you, Sarah. Thanks. Thank you again, as always, to my guest, Louise Cole, for coming on today and speaking with me about her book, The Devil's Poetry, the first of a trilogy. The next one is On Holy Ground, and it will be out later this year. Don't forget that you can go on um, for, to Kindle Scout and vote 
four, you can read the first three chapel, chapters of On Holy Ground. And if it's something that you want to read, if you want to know more about Callie's story, as I do, then you can vote and it might get picked up by Kindle Scout. Regardless, though, Louise did say that it will be out later this year. So thank you to Louise. Um, thank you to my listeners, as always. As a thank you, we are doing something new here at the podcast. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we are starting to do some book giveaways, and this is our first one. So I'm excited that Louise Louise's book gets to be the first giveaway for this. So if you are intrigued by The Devil's Poetry and Callie's story, and you would like to read it for yourself, and you'd like a free um physical copy, you can enter the giveaway. All you have to do is go on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Twitter or Facebook and retweet this episode. Um, that's it. You just have to follow us on Twitter and Facebook and retweet or share this episode, depending on which social media platform you're on. You either retweet or share, and that will enter you into this giveaway. Um, we will be giving the, I will be announcing the winners next week. And yes, yeah, so you have a week to enter. And um, our Facebook and Twitter feeds are in the show notes of this episode. You can find those down there, but I'll just tell you as well. Facebook, we are at GSMC Book Review, all one word. And Twitter, we are at GSMC underscore Book Review. So not too difficult. You can probably remember that. Uh, in the meantime, you can find all of our podcasts, not just the book review, but all 20 of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, wherever you go to listen to podcasts. And you can follow us on social media, as I was just saying. So um, in addition to Twitter and Facebook, you can find us on Instagram and Tumblr. Thank you so much once again to my guest, Louise Cole. Thank you to you, my listeners. I hope that you will join me next time when I will be speaking with author Jim Nelson about his book, Bridge Daughter. And it's another young adult book with another really great main character named Hannah. So you definitely want to tune in and find out because Hannah has a very, very odd life. Um, compared to most 13-year-old girls. So join me on Thursday for that interview with Jim Nelson. Thank you again for joining me. I hope you'll join me again next time. In the meantime, go out and get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.